Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Kyle here. The You Know I Got So In Stereo podcast is back. After one day, we are actually back because we have found Ed Bowser, who disappeared on us yesterday. We think he went to sleep at 7 p.m., but we can't conc- we can't confirm that. But we have him now at 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, so it's like 6 o'clock Ed's time. Ed, what's going on? Kyle, you're going to catch these hands, and I'm going to put you to sleep <laughs> is what is going to happen. <laughs> Man, Ed. Ed. <laughs> and Tom, we're back again. I just talked to you yesterday. We had that podcast. Saw a couple of funny comments going on in our YouTube. Shout out to Lachelle Wallace. We'll go. We'll get to that later. But what's going on, Tom? What's up, guys? Looking forward to talking about uh, R&B 2016 best albums. Guys, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I, I believe this podcast was to talk about our top 2016 songs. I think this was like the early stages of us counting down from 100 to 1, but, I mean, you guys have both put your rankings together for your top 100. I unfortunately didn't get a chance to do that. I was playing a video game and totally forgot about ranking them, so (laughs) I'm going to have to push that back a little bit. (laughs) Listen, player, you were playing a great game, so I can't fault you for this, and I will gladly be on your side, because when you play in that heat, sometimes priorities get pushed aside, so can't hate, can't hate. (laughs) I was slaving away on my list this morning, making sure I got the rankings right. He was playing games, and Ed, you, I don't know, you were having some secret dinner party or something last night. Who knows? <laughs> secret dinner party last <laughs> night? Yes, I was um, meeting with the Trump administration last <laughs> night, yeah. Excellent. <laughs> but guys, a lot All right. to discuss. Obviously, you know, it's only been a day since our last podcast, but, you know, with Ed around, we always have a lot more to talk about. But let's start off by talking about some of our favorite albums that came out in 2016. Obviously, later on, we're going to count down the list, or maybe a couple of podcasts later, we're going to count down the list of our favorite songs. But uh, we both, or all of us, have uh, put together our top 10 albums of the year. So when Stereo has a list, you know, I Got Soul has a list. So let's let's get started, guys. Um, let's get started. So what are some albums that come to mind in your top 10? Ed, you haven't published your list yet, right? Well, by the time this podcast makes air, it'll be published. It'll be published okay. bright and early tomorrow morning. And my list oh, okay. this year, I try to switch it up. Usually I do a top 10 for R&B and a top 10 for rap. This year I made a top 30 combining both just to kind of switch it up a little bit, and honestly, because rap was so mediocre until like a couple months ago. This was a good way to kind of mask that. So, anyway, check out Soul and Stereo tomorrow to see the full list, and I'm not going to disclose all the secrets, but I will talk about 10 of my favorite R&B picks for the year. And those are, y'all ready? Yep. I feel like we need, like, a drum roll. But Go ahead. Number 10. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> oh, that was so pitiful. Um, number 10. <laughs> My girl tweet her album, Charlene. I thought this album was very underrated as the year went on. It was one of those albums that people were so excited for. She'd been off the scene for like a half a decade. She came back. Album was fantastic. But then as the year went on, it really got lost in the shuffle for some reason, which is pretty unfortunate. It was a pretty strong album. And I think it's better than her previous album. Number nine was Lion Babe. Lion Babe has been around forever, seemingly. Tom can attest to that. They've had EPs and mixtapes going back to, like, 2012, if I remember. But this album was kind of a combination of that with some new material. Great, great, great stuff. Great sound. Really fresh sound from them. Number eight, let me ask Eric you, uh, let, me, let me ask you about Lion Bay before you go further. I was just talking cool. to Kyle because he, he finally had a chance to listen to it. He asked me if it was even R&B because it's so – the production is kind of different, electro, I don't know. What do you really consider them to be? I mean, I know the singer is definitely rude in R&B. It's funny you say that because in my post, I said something about how that sound, that sound kind of transcends traditional R&B. And I think a lot of the better albums this year that are featured on my list are ones that kind of, they're rooted in R&B, no question, especially when you look at listen to her vocals. But they kind of push the bounds a little bit because she's got a little, she's got a lot of funk in there. A lot of electronic stuff in there. I think it's definitely R&B when you look at it, when you peel back the layers. 
but it's just so many bells and whistles on it that add different sounds to it, and that's how it stands out. So it's definitely R and B, just not, you know, it's not Monica 1995 R and B. It's not that sound. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was you know, like, thinking. Oh, he's what, 1975 go. R&B? Here we go. <laughs> oh, I was trying to behave. I was trying to get in the Christmas spirit, and Tom gets my blood rushing. <laughs> I'm, I'm, ready to go, I had, I'm ready to go. I had my light eggnog. I'm fired up. Light oh, eggnog. Man. Well, I'm glad, uh, I'm glad we acknowledge that uh, Lion Babe isn't all the way R&B, because if you know me and Tom in the past, we've had so many arguments on what's post-worthy on the site, what's not. And, you know, there's been a couple of artists that I wanted to post, but he said it wasn't R&B. So I'm like, all right, let me check out this line, babe. And I checked it out. And let me tell you, there were so many different sounds on there. I'm like, all right, I'm not allowed to post my stuff, but we can post this. Okay, fine. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I was heated That's for a I second. Mean, but uh, a, You were heated. Oh, my argument. goodness. It's a, I mean, it's heated. a decent argument to have. I don't, it's nothing to be heated over. But, like, it's, I mean, they are a different <laughs> sound, especially – you know, I have so have a core sound. Like if you look at that sound, it's a core sound. And one thing, not to get off track, but to talk a little bit about the music for the entire year. One thing that has been disappointing from the site's perspective is the core sound of the artists. For you know, I got soul. Those core artists were the ones who underperformed so badly this year. Not that it was garbage, because it was plenty of decent stuff. But most of the core artists for the site, they just didn't come with it. So when you look at, like, my list for the best of the year, it's going to be sounds that differentiate from that because those who kind of stepped up were the people who tried something different, like Lion Babe and some other folks I'll talk about a little bit later on. Because a lot of our favorite artists, their stuff was just all right. And I think that's why 2016, the sound has continued to evolve so much. Because there's been a lot of people who kind of rested on their laurels this year, people that we expect more of. They just kind of were okay, and that was disappointing. Right. Yeah. He's, Kyle's acting like Lion Babe is, it, is similar to, like, Future or something, where it's questionable singing, like we shouldn't be posting. Oh, please, no. 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 You've tried to post that stuff on the site. I almost had to fly up to the yeah, Hoover and take a page out of it and give you a... A drop kick off the top rope. Oh, I was going to post that new Sean playing Garrett playing. song. I was going to post that new Sean Garrett song. It was like real R&B, but the singing was a little off. I was going to post it. Tom vetoed that so fast. <laughs> it was a little off. Thank you, Tom, for having common sense. Vito. Ed, Ed, before, Ed, before we get uh, back to your list, Tom and I were actually wondering, you know, we have Future, we have Designer, we have all these male R&B rap singers. Is there a female version of that? I can't think of Thankfully, not yet, thankfully, but, oh, it's coming. 2017, there'll be some robotic Optimus Prime woman up here wailing all over the stuff that the kids will tell me it's the new hotness. Please don't put it on um, our beautiful young ladies. Our queens don't need to sound like those monsters. Jeez. (laughs) Jeez. All right, Ed, back to the list. Back to the list. Since y'all got me fired up. Um, where are we? We're at number eight. My man Eric Benet. We see we were just talking about artists who are veterans in the game and kind of underperformed this year. This brother stepped up and reminded us why he is who he is. Another very underrated artist in my eyes when it comes to his talent and quality and the amount of songs that he has that are just great. He came with another album that was extremely solid, so Shout out to my man, Eric Benet. Um, Number seven, I went with my boy, Gallant. Now, that, Gallant isn't an artist that, you know, I got soul has really kind of touched on lately. But when it goes to vocals to vocals, when we just talking about vocal performances, I think that was one of the stronger albums of the year, just talking about vocal performances. Dude can sing. And his poetic lyrics, top notch. Tom knows I'm a lyric guy, so. That always hits my heart. (laughs) Number six is Solange. Now, Solange is a great album. I feel like in many aspects it's been overrated in some ways, but that doesn't take away from it being great. Great album, very poignant album. It comes at a time where social justice issues are hot and heavy. 
So she came through with some great messages there. And it's probably her best album when I think about it. It's probably her most mature and strong album. So props to Solange. Great album. I wouldn't call it album of the year like I've seen some folks do, but it's still a really strong piece of work. Mm-hmm. Number five was another underrated piece, Eric Roberson and Fonte. Their double collaboration I thought was outstanding. To me, it was the the album of the summer for R&B. It was so breezy, so fun, just 10 tracks, but it was amazing. Number four is Tom's favorite artist, Beyonce. Woo! You can... You can run, you can run, you can hide, you can do whatever. You cannot escape those beehives. And even though I can be their biggest critic, when they do something right, they do something right. I thought this album was great. Again, far from album of the year, but again, a very, very strong effort and showed a lot of growth on her part. And I think she got nominated for like 20, uh, she got nominated for like 20 Grammys for that album. Uh, (laughs) I'm not surprised. Ed, you know you're going to have to answer to me on this one. Go ahead. You were certainly riding the hype train in 2016, weren't you? Oh, please. If I was riding a hype train, Beyonce would be number one, two, three, four, five, and six. <laughs> and then Man. Solange would be the other slot. But Questionable, but continue. Props when it's due <laughs> is what I do. Number three is someone who deserved more hype than he got, although he got a lot. I was Anderson Pack. He's an artist that kind of straddles the line between R&B and hip-hop. When it comes to vocal performances, the man ain't Luther. But when it comes to (laughs) actually (laughs) being real, but when it comes to having feeling, meaning, and well-written and crafted songs, I thought Malibu was a great album. Number two, another return from the abyss of wherever milk carton artists go. My man Maxwell came back, came back hard. I loved his album. He got kind of lost in the shuffle, too, as the year went on. People were hyped for like a month, and then you didn't really hear anything else about it, which is unfortunate. But, again, I thought it was a great album, a different sound for him this time, lots of live music. We saw a lot of artists this year use a lot of live instrumentation, and he kind of rolled that wave. And number one, Kyle knows this one, is King. King was an artist, well, a group of artists. When I listened to the first four or five tracks on that album, I was like, oh, I might have to give them the five, the mysterious, magical five that I've only given one album in the past almost 10 years I've been doing this. They almost got it. Second half of the album kind of slowed down a little bit, so I went with the four and a half, but great debut, great album, the most underrated album of the year. That's my top ten. Hmm. Uh, what, what happened, happened to uh, illusions? Yeah, <laughs> a few good things. Um, what happened to who? Keith Sweat. Keith is on the top thirty list. We just going over the top oh. ten of R and B. Oh, you, you're Keith gonna send that there. man to his grave, man. No, no, Keith is there. Roe James is there. Who else is there? Somewhere he's having a heart oh. attack right now. Oh no, no, I will not do my man Keith wrong. Now you know he's making it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, check out the the full list on Soul and Stereo. That was just the top ten of R and B. So you know, t- plenty a, a more love where that comes from. Dude, there weren't even thirty albums this year. Top thirty. Come on, man. <laughs> oh, there were thirty albums because I had to listen to them. I got my list. There were about forty mediocre albums. Ugh, but Ed, Ed, this is a question that people want to know. It is hard to love on your list. <laughs> I said it was a top 30, not a top 3,000. No, that's not on my Damn. list. Damn. Damn. <laughs> well, where, let me ask you a question. Hypothetically, if uh, her or the her album or EP was an album, if the EP was an album, where would that rank? Funny you, you said, mentioned that. Make- that. Yeah. This is the first year that I included on my list. I included EPs and mixtapes, and her is there. I just I have to be honest. I after listening to it a couple of times, I don't understand what's all the fuss about. In what way? I, I don't think it's good at all. It doesn't move me. It doesn't sound good to me. Really? The only mm. really beef I have with her is it's a little bit too. It you know everybody's doing the atmospheric, moody, kind of moany stuff and. 
she's kind of doing that, but at least she's doing it well. So far, again, far from album of the year, not even in my top ten of R&B, but one of the better albums of the year. So, again, like we do, we kind of overhyped it. Just solid. What's your opinion on that one, Kyle? I want to hear Kyle's Um, opinion on that one. um, I liked it. It it, it wasn't anything new. I think think that's what Ed is alluding to. It's sort of playing off what Drake and the rest of those people have already done. But Yeah, she covered a great song on it. Yep. And, of course, me being a little biased, our good friend DJ Camper executive produced a lot of it, and I'm familiar with his work. So that drew me to the project, and I thought it was just overall a good project. Like, it was just solid. It was produced well, written well. Obviously, vocals might be a little trendy, but I think she put in a little bit of interesting. It, it was a lot more interesting than a lot of the atmospheric music that I had elsewhere. So that's why hold I on, liked hold it. On. It was, hold on. Um, stop, stop the podcast. Stop the podcast. You guys are surprised what? I don't like something you're comparing to Drake and you're saying is trendy and, and they're not really singing? You're surprised I don't like this? Come on. No, no one's saying she isn't singing. They're saying I'm saying that yeah. other artists who follow that lane isn't singing. She oh, singing. There's no singing. There's not really singing on there. No, now, see, you're comparing singing to Kelly Price. Like, there are different types of singing. <laughs> Like you don't have to be hitting the gospel vocals to say that you're not singing. She's singing. Mm-hmm. Future is not singing. No, it's she just singing in a low register and still singing. It's and that's what just doing. it's very subdued vocally. I can't. I I pass. No, you're right. It's subdued vocally, but it's still. But it's small. intentional. It's intentional. Yeah. It's so not, and it's working. Singing, I'm guys singing low that. because I don't have vocals. That's a difference. Yeah. And it's working, someone, guys. Guys, it's, it's no, working because her came, her came out with a project, and now we have a hymn. Oh, I kid you not. There is a hymn now oh, floating around the I internet. I know there's a hymn. Him showed up in my oh, him showed up <laughs> him showed up in my Twitter feed and in my inbox. So shout out to him, whoever him is. Well, I'm, I'm still not buying it. If someone intentionally dumbs down their vocals for the sake of being what people would listen to nowadays. We should be applauding them. Come on, I, I don't think it was dumbing down. It's playing to that style of music. Yeah, I mean, if but, you were, if there is, listen to the actual beat. If the production is subdued and slow, you can't scream all over top of the beat like you're destroying it. You have to ride what the production is, and the production on that album is pretty subdued, pretty atmospheric. Now, if she is right. intentionally doing that on songs where she should be belting out, then we will see. But We'll see that when her volume two drops, I guess. Well, let me ask you a question, Ed. You're taking that project over Kiki Wyatt's Rated Love album? <sighs> Listen, I love Kiki. And anyone knows. Kyle, follows my Kyle cut, knows, cut his line off. Someone cut his I, line off, please. I love Kiki. I love Kiki more than I love Tom. We'll put it like that. I love oh. Kiki. However, <laughs> Kiki's, there were a lot of albums this year that just – we're okay. Kiki falls in that. After Seven falls in that. Um, BJ the Chicago Kid fell in that. K. Michelle fell in that. There was just a lot of stuff that was just I right. And I thought Kiki has had much stronger projects, even though she has some great songs on that. And you'll see that when you check out our 100 songs of the year. You've got quite a few songs featured there. But as an overall project, it's just all right. Tom, I'll put, it, I'll put it like this to you. As the great Lachelle Wallace once said, that album was a little too la-di-da for us. <laughs> God. Shut up. I wonder what Lachelle Wallace thinks about her, though. She probably We've seen the comments. We've we, we seen the comments. Oh, uh, of her or Kiki? Her. No. Her. Yeah, her, the EP. We know she likes Kiki. I'm sure her comments will be, you like that album? Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, we'll find it on uh, when we post this up, and it's in the comments. But just the last note about him or her or they or whatever. You know, I just realized Ed's statement of him showed up on my inbox is as grammatically incorrect as Avant's song "Minds Do." <laughs> That's actually a good song, that song, though. That is actually a good song. No, it is, but the grammar just destroys my heart. You know what's interesting about that song? He actually doesn't say minds do in the song. He says mind do. He doesn't. And that's what drives (laughs) me crazy. 
It's like, why is this the title of the song? That was a good album, by the way. Shout out to Yvonne. I like that album. Is it on your list? Hey, uh, that wasn't 2016. Oh, that was the last album. That was the last album? Yes. That was okay. the last album. Starting to all blend together. Uh, <laughs> you, I'm supposed to be the old one, Tom. Get it together. No, I mean, the no, music, guys, or, <laughs> listen to our last guys, podcast. Think, we talked about... Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm the old one now. Just earlier today, I was listening to Elder Barge. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with listening to Elder Barge. <laughs> no, not at all. I'm just saying. Rather him than designer. Yep. <laughs> all right, Tom. What's our list? Well, Ed, you had a few. You had a few you left out. I'll point some of them out. You didn't yeah, show music soul child and Andy Love, our boy. Life on Earth was out this year. That was actually, and again, I don't want to spoil anything. That didn't make the top thirty, but that almost made it. That like that didn't make the, the top thirty. Of course. Oh my god! It was oh. one. It was on. My, it was on the final list. It made. It was like one of the last ones I cut off. That one, I think SWV. It was like two or three that I had to go. Jeez. But shout out to him. That was a solid album. Actually, we had a reader. We had a reader that said, "I love music, Soul Child, but he is not traditional R and B." Not to mention, this was his worst album to me. Mm. Mm, I wouldn't say it's well, his worst. I wouldn't say it's his worst either, but what's the worst? His best. Wait, what was his worst? Radio. Yeah. Mm, well, I don't even remember what was on radio. Uh, he actually if did you, a big single on there. Yeah. If you leave, so beautiful. Oh, no, no, that one was okay. That was all right. I don't think that was his worst. Well, then you probably think his worst is um, Music and the Magic. The Purple Album. Mm. Oh, yeah. I think you <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> I mean, the first four to me are a cut above, obviously. But that's another discussion for another time. Yeah, that would be a good one for another time. All right, so... That album, then uh, you didn't have Fantasia on your list. Nope. Fantasia goes into that bucket of veterans who kind of just were all right this year. Mm. You didn't have Joe on your list. I guess he's in your same bucket there. Mm-hmm. He was a little lower in the bucket. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh. You didn't have Anthony, ha- Anthony Hamilton. No, Anthony Hamilton... No, he didn't make it. He almost made it. Jeez. But he didn't make the, the final cut. Good album. I like it. So you didn't have the Grammy-nominated Maya Smooth Jones? <laughs> My Lord, have mercy. No, I did not have Smooth Jones. Shout out to Maya. I love Maya. I love Maya. I really do. But it baffles me when I look at all the stuff that came because the Grammys always, whenever the Grammys drops, fans go nuts because this person wasn't nominated, or this person only got one nomination, and blah blah blah. But I don't know if I've ever seen a year where I saw someone included and was like, "Um, how did she get up there?" And not it's <laughs> not that the album was bad because it's not bad at all, but the inclusion was just so random. Let me find out Maya's uncle up there on the nomination committee. That's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So you didn't have Silk, who were nominated for the worst CD of all time with their oh, best work on the, on the CD. Oh, this play. Shout, shout out to anyone that bought a Silk CD. <laughs> Kyle knows that Silk is a, one of my all-time favorites. All-time favorites. But yep. I was not impressed with this year's offering. Love for You to Light Me was an outstanding single. Outstanding. The overall project, uh, who mixed well, it? In, in case, in case <laughs> they don't know what we're talking about, we got sent the CD by the label, and let's just say it was, uh, it looked homemade. The artwork on it's the like CD. If, it's like if you go to Best Buy and buy a bunch of blank CDs. It was literally that. Silk with a marker on the CD. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. I'm serious. Too. I can't believe you're, you're talking bad about Silk, but those are your boys, Kyle. They are my boys. 
I, he, I, I'm he with Kyle on this one. They are my dudes, but he he made one know. of them cry though. He made one of them cry, so that's all I have to say. I've re- I heard the story, yeah. <laughs> and then he, uh, you left off Ro James. That's your boy. Oh, I did not. Ro James is on the top third. I forgot to okay. mention that. He is there. I'm still tripping off this top 30 like it's some achievement to be in the top 30. 30 is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> not, when you have listened to probably... I have a list when I review and just listen to albums. I have a running list that I keep throughout the year, and it's like literally over a hundred. So if you made that, I think you're good. No, but listen, <laughs> listen. Imagine me telling Music Soul Child, "Oh, don't worry, you didn't make the top ten, but you're in the top thirty. It's all good." Like, do you think he'd be impressed? <laughs> of course not, because that project <laughs> is his baby. But when I've heard 150 other ones and 29 were better than that. Be happy you are in the crowd, player. That's all I'm saying. Which is why Keith Sweat is currently on the way to the hospital. Oh, poor Keith. Oh, I'll be there. <laughs> I'll hold his hand as they get the refrigerator going. <laughs> Damn. Oh, my goodness. We can't. Oh. Look, player, we lost too many people this year. We lost too many. Fife, Prince, all of them gone. I ain't losing Keith. Jeez. Yep. All right. So are we allowed to talk about singles, too, or do you want to save that? No, let's say that. we got to ask Ed about some of his other albums on the top 30. Is Views by Drake on there? You're going to catch this dial tone real quick if you think Views by Drake is on that album list. Please. Damn. Yeah. How is an album? And speaking of that, I want to address some, because I know I'm going to get them in my mentions, because they got them in my mentions when I did the review, and it was the same thing when I did the DJ Khaled review. I gave both of those albums three. And the overarching reply was always, he got two or three bangers up there. Why don't you like it? <laughs> Let me tell you something, player. If you got a test and you got 20 questions on this test and you get three right out of 20, what is your score? A F. Thank you. You're not getting fast and great. That's not good, guys. Yeah. No, you don't. <laughs> What about uh, J. Cole? Did he make the list? No, he did not. And the whole reason I held off on this list, which was supposed to be posted last week, was because J. Cole had his mystery album out, and everyone was so hyped, and he had the little teaser single, which was good. But the, and the album was fine, but top 30, no, it was not. No J. Cole. Mm. Damn. Like I said, it was a pretty bad year for established artists, but for rising artists who tried to do something different, they stood out. Well, what would you say was your biggest disappointment of the year in terms of an album? <sighs> Aside from the obvious Usher, you could probably say. I wouldn't even say that that was a big disappointment because of the singles. I knew it was going to, like, you saw the train wreck coming down the track. <laughs> so I was just like, let's just get, I'm going to get my lawn chair and get my popcorn and let's see what pops. I think the biggest disappointment was from the art, from the um, rap world, probably J. Cole. And again, it's not a bad album, but because of the hype and the decent singles, it just didn't measure up. For R&B, it might be Fantasia because of the same thing. It was a solid single. They were album. It was like, okay, this is going to be a good album. This is what we need. And the album came out, and as I was listening to it, and as I listen to an album, I write notes during every track. And my notes are just like, eh, it's all right. Eh, this is okay. And, oh, the album's over. Like, it was just, you, we expected way more. And I'm not, again, saying that the album was bad. Fantasia album was not bad at all. But when you expect a great album and you just get an okay album, Kind of hurts, and that happened a whole lot this year. Fantasia you know was just the most notable one. You know what's funny about the Usher train wreck you mentioned? He wasn't even what's on that? the train himself. He had hopped off the train before the train even came down the track. <laughs> because and, he knew no, it was going to be a Kyle, burning wreck. Me and Kyle were talking about it in the last podcast. He didn't even really promote it. He gave up on it. It seemed like he didn't care that much. Like, it was crazy. Because he knew. He knew. He knew this was not the direction. And, I, I, you know, we haven't interviewed him. We don't know 
the mindset what went behind it. Maybe this isn't even the album you wanted to make. Maybe it was out on label pressure. We don't know. But it was clear that once that album came out and just vanished two weeks later, that he wasn't on board with it. Kyle, what was your biggest disappointment? My biggest disappointment, I think um, Fantasia is obviously one of them. Alicia Keys, I think, was the other one. She had been gone for a minute. And, you know, Girl on Fire wasn't her strongest album. And I think oh, no. it, it's... It, it seemed like she was going to go back in the studio and refocus and put out something amazing. Uh, the album itself wasn't bad. Uh, for me, it just personally wasn't my, the album that I was expecting from her. Um, you know, it, it, and to, to be honest, it just didn't match up to some of her earlier albums. Um, but that was my biggest di- disappointment because, you know, we felt like we knew with Usher it was a train wreck and things weren't going to turn out well just based on... Uh, um, his lead singles, but Alicia Keys had a great lead single in common, and then mm-hmm. you know you just expected a lot more from it, and it was just like this isn't really what I wanted. It's like she probably reworked the album after in common didn't work, but you know it, it was just disappointing to see that it just didn't work out for her, or the album just wasn't give, what we were expecting. I'll give you mine. My one that was a good take too, Alicia Keys. Mine was Anthony Hamilton. And not because I thought the album was horrible, but to me, Anthony Hamilton could do no wrong. Like, everything he puts out, to me, has been has been really good. He's one of the top R&B artists, and his game tours religiously. But to me, the album just, I, I just wasn't moved by it. It just seemed a bit boring to me. And it wasn't bad, like I said, but I just expect greatness from him. And even though I loved Amen and a couple others, I didn't, I didn't uh, like it as much as his uh, other work. So I'll go with that one. Yeah, you are now, alone on that one. And I've talked to, I think we've talked about this, and I know I've talked to some fans on um, Twitter when that album dropped. Oh, there was a lot of disappointment. And again, it's just another album like the John Legends and the so many others that came out this year. That people are like, here's an artist that I love. Oh, I'm so excited. Here's the album. And it's just all right. Like, it's just, I think that's been the most disappointing story of the year. Not that it's been a ton of garbage, but it's just been a lot of mediocre, okay stuff from artists who have delivered outstanding albums in the past. It's been kind of disheartening. Well, we've Speaking talked about some of the albums, uh, talking about some of the albums that are coming out in 2017. That's what you know, Tom and I touched on um, on our last podcast. Ed, who are you looking forward to? Jeez, I'm not even I got sure. Two, I, I, I got two in mind that will have everyone excited, but Ed, you go first. I'm not even sure on 2017 if these albums are actually coming. I thought we were going to get the Brandy album this year, but that just like kind of disappeared out the begging and pleading. So I would like to see that if it's still on the docket. Um, I wanted that Faith Evans album that's mm. kind of been like, kind of out here where it's supposed to be the rumor is it's going to be a lot of biggie beat samples and it's called the king and i i was excited about that that kind of vanished if these albums actually exist and aren't just twitter lore i'm most excited for those two but who knows hmm. i'm actually well, I, I, it's like i talked about last night how i was nervous for what was gonna happen with mary's album i'm almost like cringing when I hear about albums coming out because it's almost like I'm expecting the worst. And even though I, I love I R&B, it's like, oh, man, I'm just, uh, I'm just so nervous that they're going to put out. Yeah. That's what happened yeah. this year with, um, in November when we got the John Legend album and somebody else dropped, too. It was like two that kind of dropped around the same time. And I was kind of cringing because I was like, I don't know. And again, they were just, all right. Mary's a good mm-hmm. example. I like Thick of it a lot, but I don't know. Yep. Well, we've got a couple of albums. These aren't the two and uh, two I had in mind, but I'll just list them off, and you guys give me your early reactions to them. So, obviously, the Justin Timberlake album. He's in the studio right now with Timberland as well as the Neptunes. Mm-hmm. That should be mm-hmm. exciting. Should be mm-hmm. as long as it's not like the Troll song. And I mean the the Troll song did very very well for its audience, but. I don't want to hear that weird poppy stuff. Give me. I just have a feeling that 
I have a feeling that he's going to be going away from R&B. Didn't he hit he wanted to do some country music or something? Well, I think that was a little overplayed. Like, he has, that's his background, and he had the one song, and it did well, but there is no indication for me other than random people on Twitter saying it, that he wants to that to be a direction. It's just something he liked. So we'll see. Well, I don't think he's coming out with a country album. Here's the way I line it up. So you had the Troll song, and then before that you had two pretty poppy singles that he went with for radio, which right. was um, yep. Mirror and uh, what is the other song called, Kyle? Not a bad thing. Bad, yeah. I mean, to me, yeah. it's like he's kind of, is he kind of trending in that direction now? I, it I, may I, be. I like Not a Bad Thing. I did not like Mirrors, and the Troll song wasn't high on my list either but the trolls i mean when you look at all the artists <laughs> the mainstream artists that's what they're doing that's what it's not it wouldn't be surprising at all a little disheartening but not surprising yeah and i think um either it's bell biv devoe uh they haven't put out their album yet or swv one of them is putting out a new album soon because i heard that they have a song together ed don't get yeah, too it's, excited it's not 1991 oh well, look, play. I'm gonna make it 1991. But um, yes, BBD is supposed to because they were supposed to drop this year too, and they kind of fizzled out. So maybe that's a 2017 project. January 27th, I believe the date is. Oh, that hmm. that will be here pretty soon. Yeah, and yeah, and the two it. albums that uh that we should be looking forward to. Number one is Black Tie, aka Tyrese's rap persona. <laughs> Why? Why? I thought he had retired. <sighs> Who wants I the told album? y'all in 2015 that man won't go nowhere. He got Transformers movies to make. He ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I mean, is there uh, an audience black, for a black I, tie? I don't know. I don't mind black tie, like, spitting a verse in once on a whole album, but I am not <laughs> here for no 16, 17 tracks of this dude doing this stuff. <laughs> um, another project well actually this one came out already Music Soul Child came out with a new mixtape uh, via The Hustle mm-hmm. Tom I'm actually going to the press conference for it here in New York on Tuesday that's all I have to say about that <laughs> alright then <laughs> I haven't listened to it I can't say anything about it Yeah. oh exciting news guys so I'm going to be interviewing uh, Genuine again on Saturday. And I came across a video on YouTube, a recent video. He was doing an interview with another outlet. And he said that him and Ja Rule are going to be working on something together. Clay, are you calling me the man of the 90s? Look at this. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know. Genuine doesn't seem motivated to make music at this point. He's been yeah. talking about these albums for four years now. Yep. <laughs> yes. Yeah, now that you mentioned it, then wasn't he supposed to have like a reunion album with Tim? That was like that might have been yeah. before I joined you guys. That was like four years ago. Yeah. So I mean man, man. we're we're just we're just so excited about R and B, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're supposed to be the biggest cheerleaders and we're just kinda like, eh. Damn, Damn. I feel bad now. Well, one more note about 2017. Can you guys do me a favor? I know the holidays are coming up. Everyone's going to be eating a lot of food, but by next year, I want everyone to look like Lloyd on his album cover. My <laughs> God, what happened to Lloyd? It's Captain Caveman. What is going down, Lloyd? He must work out. Oh, he was doing <laughs> Insanity or P90X or got the Bowflex popping or something. Jeez. Uh, yeah, and during that time, he forgot to cut his hair. Uh, nope. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what's funny is I interviewed him last year. It was probably his first interview in, like, four years, and he did not look like that. Lloyd was dressing like he was, like, 60. I remember yeah. that. He, had the, he had the sweater shirt on. Man, that was didn't bad. He have, didn't he have paralegic glasses on or something that made him look even older? I think so. <laughs> People commented on this, too. I remember that. Yep. Well, he went out into the jungle and found himself, and now he's, like, out here eating deer with his bare hands or something because this (laughs) dude is, like, 300 pounds. 
of Jeez. muscle, so I ain't hating. Yeah. <laughs> speaking of, speaking of Lloyd, where's his brother Mario, Kyle? Calm down. <laughs> is he coming out? Is he ever, is he most anticipated at 2017? You would you know what? I've learned as a Mario fan not to anticipate a Mario project because you get promised a bunch of different things and it just never happens. I think we're waiting on six years now since his last album, so we're going to just have to sit here and wait a little longer. Wait a minute. Mario fans know what I'm talking about. We have to revisit how he posted the whole album on his website, and you found it there, remember? Yeah. Um, He was working with Scott Storch in the studio, and he put up an album release date. I visited his website. You could actually listen to the whole album, snippets, but nevertheless, you could listen to the whole album. It was supposed to come out of November of 2015, that date passed. Nothing happened. Come February, the website got taken down. And it wasn't until two months ago we interviewed Mario, asked him what the hell happened to that album. Scott Storch is going through some legal things, so that album's not coming out. Mario is back on his independent thing. He put out that terrible song that I don't think is making any of our lists for 2016. No. <laughs> uh, oh, no. So, so we're going to have to wait until 2017 to see if Mario picks it up. Um, but I'm telling you, it's not looking good for my generation right now. Like, Pleasure P is another one of the family. Like, He's not coming out either. No, yeah. That's your boy, Pleasure P. It's like, <laughs> you know, I got soul is his favorite site. No, uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. Although uh, it looks like it looks like Jay Holiday has given up. No, come on. That tour is not strong, isn't it? Honestly, I, no, I think he's actually given up. What do you mean? Look on look on his Instagram. He doesn't even talk about music anymore. Like he got a day job and working in Target or something? I'm willing to bet at least half of these R&B singers out here work at FedEx or or Walmart oh, man. or Target. Oh, come Listen, on, man. Play, uh, it's been a long time since 106 and Park was on. Sometimes those checks dry up, and if you need to get some seasonal help, get a little discount at Best Buy, I ain't mad. Get your hustle on. You guys just made me think of a great topic for our next podcast. We're going to name an R&B artist, and then we're going to predict what that artist would be doing if they were not a singer. Oh, man. We're going to get in so much trouble. (laughs) (laughs) How funny would that be? All right. (laughs) We probably shouldn't, as a matter of fact. No, we shouldn't. (laughs) Now, before we get out of here, um, (laughs) as you posted a... uh, and this is supposed to be off the air, but we're just going to do it on the air because this is an unfiltered <laughs> podcast. But, Ed, you posted a while ago, back in November, the top 25 beats produced by the Neptunes. Uh-huh. We have some problems with that list. <laughs> what problems, may I ask, do you have? I don't even remember what was on that list, but please bring your grievances. Well, well, I'm actually convinced that someone paid you to put that list out. That's not your real list. <laughs> what was missing from this list that got y'all so worked up? I'm trying to remember what's even on the list. Now, you have to remember this was not a best songs or for real list. We're talking about beats, not best R&B songs. So you got to keep that in mind. But Wamp Wamp is a good missing? Neptune's beat. Wamp Wamp? Yes. No. <laughs> Huh. No, Ed. Are we saying that Wamp Wamp is, first of all, it's ridiculous that I'm saying the words Wamp Wamp, but <laughs> Wamp Wamp is not a good beat? No. That album, that album is probably their best work from beginning to end as an album. Like, they had their best, the Clips had their best beat on that album. I would uh. actually make an argument that nothing should be on the list post-2004. Anything after that shouldn't even be allowed. Mm, well, that came out in 06, so I will admit that kind of like 06 was kind of like the, when the steam started running out. So you're close. But again, yeah, no, you're right. right in front of me. Ed's right. Ed's right. The only songs that he has post-2004 are the clip songs. Yeah, that's so. pretty much it for their big run. 
Do you have? Uh, well, but I need I'll to hear what's, what's missing. Like that's what I want to hear. What's missing? Does Does he have Solange crush on there? No. No. But oh. I don't think that's. Oh. I don't think that's a. Oh. I don't think that's a great. Come on. Beat. Oh come on. That's a. It's a good song. I mean, it's a. It's a good beat, but best of their beats. I don't know, player. Okay. Okay. Does he have? And shout out to my man Mark Dorsey. Does he have "Love You Better" on there? Of course, oh, I know that's up there. Like that's okay. forgiven. Thank goodness. Come on, player. And the, my number have one would actually be and a brother. me and Kyle talk about this stuff like every day. Actually, believe it or not, still to this day, Billy really most wanted. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> my number one. That almost my number one. Be honest. That's a great. Billy most wanted is probably their best. Work in my opinion. That album, that and the Khalees first album, Kaleidoscope. So that's another mm, story. That is another story. If it was most wanted, was fine. I wouldn't say it's their best work. Anyway, what would your number one be so I can uh, see what madness you're about to spit? Caught out there. I thought, see, caught out there to me has gotten very overrated. I feel like no. Get Along With You is way better. Way no, but the see, if you the song, all of it. Wait, are we talking beat or song? I'm just talking about the beat. I'm talking beat and song. Just because I feel I like caught, I feel like caught out there was like shocking at the time, but with hindsight, it was good. But it wasn't as good as we made it out to be. It was just no, different. and the same I thing goes for the beat. I actually don't even like the song that much. I just like the beat. The beat's great. Because I'll tell you why. It combines, to me, it combined all the best of the Neptunes elements of their production. Like, there was, like, four different of their top elements that they used in that one. You'll have to revisit. I mean, it's, no, <laughs> it's, it's hard to hate. I'm not going to say it's trash, but I felt like there were much better beats. And most people would say it's probably one of their best beats. I just feel like it's gotten kind of overrated over the years. All right, let's take it home, Kyle. All right, let's get into the food discussion, guys. Um, you know, we, we obviously like to talk about food. I want to present this in a different type of way for you guys. Um, you know, we've all been on different dates with different women. What is the cheapest place that you've taken a female on a date? Oh, boy. Kyle trying to get a brother jacked up. Yeah. I don't remember the cheapest place, but I remember – this is kind of like the opposite. I remember being having a very, very ungrateful day, and it's so funny you said caught out there because I remember that song being, like, on the radio during our trip to this place. So we were going to, I think, the – we were, like, in – it was in college, and for, like, a humanities class, we had to, like, go to X amount of operas for, like, credit. So we went to this opera, but the opera ran really late. So instead of going out to dinner like we had planned to do, she was like, oh, take me to this drive-thru. So I was yeah. like, all right, cool. So I, we go to this drive-thru plan. This has to order everything. She's like, can I get, like, two number twos, two drinks, like an ice cream, a blah, blah, blah. <laughs> She's telling me this to tell the little, like, speaker thing. I was like, can I get a number one and a water? And she was like, no, you didn't. And I'm like, well, you ain't paying for it. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, yeah. So I guess that probably want... was my cheapest date now that you mentioned it, girl. All right, you want to hear mine? Yeah. Yep. Well, I mean, this isn't as funny as the story is, Ed, but before I was married to Marlene, I'm ashamed to say we used to go out pretty often to Burger King. <laughs> it's, 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 it's sit there and, There's no shame there. No, no, it gets worse. <laughs> you made you made her wear the Burger King crown? No, no. I made her order the Happy Meal though, so we get the Star Wars toy. Oh, oh. my gosh, Tom! <laughs> <laughs> hey, you gotta do what you got. Those toys go up in value over the years, man. They do. You gotta do what you got. <laughs> oh my God. Kyle, Shut you up, all I hope y'all sold um, that Darth Maul or whatever it was you got. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is actually a really terrible story. So 
I was going to take out a girl to a date one time, and, you know, it was supposed to be at a nice restaurant. I couldn't find a place. So instead, I was like, hey, let's just go to this gas station, and let's just get some food from here. So, <laughs> hey, gas <yo>. station. <laughs> I was young. Date gas station food? <laughs> Oh yeah, oh, both man. of us had like a pe- we both had a pep and cheese stick. It was good oh, times. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty bad. Kyle, you need I'm to not... submit a a post to the love letter section of Soul and Stereo so I can tell you how to get your life right because that is the worst. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. I would actually yeah, like I... I would like Lachelle Wallace to chime in on the comments, and I'd like to hear her story too. I bet she has a good one. Oh, you know she does. Oh, no. Some brother about <laughs> to get put on blast. <laughs> you guys want to hear something crazy? Actually, I just saw this Like, we haven't Facebook. heard enough crazy stuff tonight. No, no. This is, this is R&B related. So, on the album cover of Confessions by Usher. Yeah. He's actually confessing. Like, have you noticed the background? Oh, he's in a confessional. You know, yeah. I don't think I've ever noticed that. Really? Hmm. I don't you did? Like he noticed it. No, I didn't. I don't live and look at album covers like that. Come on. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm sure that we will have about ten listeners call us crazy and like, how did you miss that? But I literally never thought of it like that. I just Isn't it just, just his head? Face. I thought it was just his face with like a brown background. Yeah, yeah but I back. guess that's a conventional. <laughs> oh. I never thought hmm. of it like that. I just yeah. remember his greasy head. <laughs> Isn't he wearing a hat in the picture? No. He's not? What in the player? Are you thinking I about the one... Harley Wilson cover? I thought he's wearing a wave cap or something in the in the cover. I don't <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> the man is uh... not wearing a do rag on the cover of Confession. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. He was wearing one on the Usher Miley Raymond is currently <laughs> Usher is currently rolling over in his grave right now. <laughs> Hold on. He the was wearing a new rag on the highway. Put him in. Yes, on Look my up. way 15 years earlier than that. <laughs> I'm looking it up. Hold on. Yes, and I the thought Miley's got the blue do-rag on. He is wearing a hat. Look at the cover. He's not wearing a hat on confessions. Look it up. Oh, Look it up. On. Let me get this phone together so I can see. <laughs> wow, Ed's about to... What I have a heart attack? Well, he could be talking about the deluxe version. <laughs> Hold on. Give him a chance to pull up on his dial-up internet. Hold on. Wait a second. Ed? Okay, he's got the little freaking Woo! winter cap on, but that's the regular version. I'm thinking of the deluxe version. See? Not a special edition. <laughs> guys, but you can't I'm, wear I'm, a hat. You can't I wear a hat in church, this. guys. Come on. I know. Come on now. The ushers that just proves he's, he's, punch you in he's the a face. bad person. <laughs> It's proven he's you a bad person. come to my person. church wearing a hat, and it's over. Oh, <laughs> Those man. old ladies do not play at that front door. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. Damn. Now, uh, before we get out of here, guys, I want to do a little R&B quiz with you guys. You know, we were on the topic of Usher. So I want to do this quickly. We'll probably do this more often next time um, or, or more next time. But you guys are both huge 112 fans, right? Yep. Tom? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if this was 2001. So, calm down. So, <laughs> if I if if I were to play a 112 song, would you be a would you be able to identify who's singing what part? Like yes. are you able to distinguish each? Can you do that? Yes, I can. Most of the time. So, we're going to do a little R&B quiz. I'll let Tom go first. I'll play a song. Hopefully you guys can hear it. Man, we don't have all day, but here we go. That's Flynn. That's Flynn? All right. All right. Ed, you ready? Yep. All right. Who's the guy on the second verse? 
Yes, but I don't remember that dude. I know the answer. Tom gave it to him. It's Q Parker. He's the more nasally sounding one. I get Q <laughs> and Deron mixed up. Like I have to like no. think really hard. Yep. All right, you guys. You guys are both Jagged Edge fans as well. Oh, there's no <laughs> way you're getting this one. I don't know. The no way you're getting this one. You're not gonna make me differentiate between the twins, player. Like I don't know. Oh yes, we are. Oh yes, we are. Oh, right. good Lord. Ed, Come on in. Ed, <laughs> Ed, you ready for this? I'm ready. All right. You, it, it, it's one out of two here, so. <laughs> You're one out of two. So. It could be no, Wingo. I don't know. Wingo. It could be. Here we go. I mean, it's a twin. I don't know which one it is. It's the one that's not Wingo. Okay, is it the, is it the is it the twin with braids or the one without braids? It's the one that starts with a B. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea, Blair. Is this? It's. I don't know. I'm just saying, Brandon. Wow, you did it! Look at that, fifty-fifty. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Tom, you ready for drill? This is the very last one. Oh, come on. That's yeah. easy. Really? It, it, it gets kind of tricky. All right, you ready, Tom? Go ahead. That's jazz. Yep. Come on. <laughs> yeah, jazz is go pretty distinct. Not necessarily. Jazz. Ed, didn't you once say that jazz is the male version of Kelly Price? <laughs> I almost threw my phone. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna get us in trouble. But um, let's let's no, let's, uh, let's that's edit. a good, that's a po- no, that's a positive thing. It's I'm talking about like a real. <laughs> it's a positive thing, but there are way too many in jokes there for me to get in trouble on um on this podcast, but. Oh my gosh, Tom! You getting cold for Christmas, dog? <laughs> oh come on! I'm talking about he's he's one of the best vocalists of his generation. Is what I'm telling you. He is. He's very churchy. Yes. Oh, okay. Because oh, I was about to I was about to throw Ruben stuttered stuttered in that comparison. But if you guys are talking about vocals, then no, no. <laughs> what are you, what are you <laughs> no, doing? No, we're not. Oh my gosh, Kyle, you're making no. it worse. Oh, uh, we're getting, we're getting. <laughs> Shout out to Ruben stuttered. All right, cut the tape. Let's go. All right. All right, so that seems to be it for this time. Next time we'll have the top 100 R&B songs of 2016 ready for you. But until then, uh, Ed, anything that you want to add on? Just make sure you check out Soul and Stereo. If you are listening to this, it should be up. The top 30 albums of the year. We got R&B joints. We got rap joints. We got... All that you need for the best stuff of the year, including some albums we didn't talk about tonight. Tom, you know I got so we just talked yesterday, so there's probably not a lot for us to talk about. But I'm know. I'm looking forward to the top 100 songs of the year list. It should be an interesting list. I don't think any other site will have one like it. So that's what I'm most excited about. And a spoiler for everyone. We, yes, we our lists are just so great because you've got three different. Experts in R&B, and they're so diverse. Like, I'm always really, really proud of the list we put together. Yep, and a spoiler alert for everyone, August Alcina is on the list. I convinced these two that there was a song that was eligible and that was worthy on the list. So, August, I got you. I'm and as po- shocked as you are. Second spoiler <laughs> alert, I intentionally put the Beyonce song in the last position. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you can guess what song I put at the last position. I will not spoil it here, but you can guess. I didn't look yet. Mm-hmm. Yep. But until then, uh, we'll find out next week or next time who is at what position uh, in terms of the list. Um, but until then, we are out of here. This is Kyle, Ed, and Tom signing out. Out of here. This is Kyle, Ed, and Tom signing out. Out of here. This is Kyle, Ed, and Tom signing out. <laughs>